Hi, I'm Vampy and today I'm going to talk to you about the Electric Eel Wheel 6.1. This video is a, a fairly quick start guide for those who already know how to spin but may not be familiar with the machine, just to uh, show you its features and how to use it. If you are a brand new spinner, you may want to watch the entire series called eSpinners for Beginners that you can find on the Dreaming Robots website and that will talk you through how to use your spinner as well as drafting and plying and the sort of fibres you may wish to uh, make your yarn from. So. This is your electric eel wheel 6.1. When you get it out of the box, you will have all this stuff and you'll also have uh, more bobbins. You get two big bags of bobbins in there, but uh, I've just got one out here to show you. You will see some uh, power cable things. You have the power brick and you have a connector that goes from the mains to your power brick. Uh, if you're in North America, you can use this as is. If you are elsewhere in the world, get yourself a connector that goes from your mains to a uh, figure eight plug like this. Uh, and uh, that wire will then go into this power brick and uh, the power brick goes into your electrical wheel. Alternatively, you can use a travel adapter, but uh, they can be a bit bulky and unwieldy. Next, uh, another cable -y thing, we have the foot switch. This just uh, gives you one more option in turning on and off your e-spinner and I will show you how to use that later. Then we have the main body of the spinner. It uh, has a base with it and this base here is uh, the right size for putting a battery in if you want to uh, run this from battery. To put it back on, uh, make sure the flat part is facing the front and the screws go into the uh, keyholes and slide and then it clicks into place. And this here is the flyer, which you may notice is slightly different to the, uh, the previous version. This has an extra stabilising part here, which uh, lets you go a little bit faster without the arm splaying out, keeps it uh, a bit of a smoother spin. And in the flyer we have uh, an orifice reducer. I can uh, pull that out and then the full size orifice here that'll let you spin fairly chunky yarn sort of my little finger will fit in there and uh, this reducer it's useful if you're spinning finer yarns uh, it lets you uh, spin anything up to that size and it stops the yarn bumping around in the orifice quite so much so uh, let's go over a close-up of all the bits on the base here are the controls on the main body First thing here, this is the motor pulley. This uh, will drive the drive band and then turn the flyer. This here is your speed dial. Adjust from zero to six, just simply turn the dial. This on the top here, you have two switches. The, uh, this one here is uh, on off switch. This one is direction switch, S and Z. Now, if you're left-handed or for some reason want these two switches uh, in the different positions, it's uh, a quick job to just uh, go underneath, take the switches out and uh, swap them round. Here, this is your uh, scotch tension knob. It attaches to the brake band and a spring on the other side and uh, you just turn that to tighten and increase your tension. And on the back we have our connectors. We have a light that flashes to show you when you've got power, when you plug it in. This one is for the switch and uh, this one is for your power. Each bobbin comes in three pieces. You have a flat end, an end with a whirl and a shaft and the two end pieces have bearings in. To uh, assemble you simply screw the pieces together and uh, you will see here the uh, end has a circular mark in just around there. That shows you when your bobbin is half full. So uh, if you're planning to uh, spin two bobbins and ply them together, um, then uh, you spin both up to half. You uh, should fit on a, a slightly overfilled full bobbin. And uh, just screw that on. And that is your bobbin assembled. And we have this bag of bits. So the first thing in it is the manual. Next, let's go through everything else in there. There are a lot of duplicates and spares here, so you won't need all of these immediately. First things are drive bands. Uh, I'll uh, put those back straight away because I've already got one out. 
these little things here. They are spare hooks for the flyer. Put you two away. You've got uh, two orifice hooks, so I will keep one of those and put it on the magnets. Put the other one away. Here we have a spare bit of string for the brake band and a spare spring. And this spring is uh, stretchier, so uh, if you're spinning finer yarns, you may want to swap out the one that comes on the machine for this finer one for a bit more control. We have an Allen key for uh, tightening the motor pulley if it gets loose. We have some um, bearings. Um, you'll need one for the rear cradle. The others are spares. We have some lots and lots of o-rings. These little o-rings are for the flyer hooks to help them grip. So if your flyer hooks start sliding around and uh, don't stay put anymore, you'll probably need to change the o-rings out. And finally, we have a handful of these which are uh, to put over your hooks on the flyer if you're spinning chunky yarns or yarns that snag on the wire hooks. So now I'm going to show you how to put the whole lot together. So uh, we will take our base and uh, get the bits that I've put to one side. I'm going to uh, put my orifice hook there my flyer put on the bobbin with this lumpy end here furthest away from the orifice. I'll slide that on, I'll put my drive band on, make sure your drive band goes in this groove here, you can see in that groove sometimes it wants to slip in front or behind and then it won't drive properly so make sure it's in the groove finally at the end I'll just put a, a bearing on and the back bearing fits in the back cradle and the front bearing fits in the front cradle. Again I'm going to check my drive band is in the correct position and then pull it down and pop it over the drive wheel. On this side I'm going to take my brake band and uh, loosen it a little bit and pull it up and over the whirl on the rear here. I will uh, put that to the side. I'll tighten that until I'm uh, probably about there. You will uh, be able to adjust this once your wheel is running but I, I, I want it to have a bit of a uh, bit of slack in uh, to be uh, tight enough. I know I'll get some take up. Right I'm going to uh, put these little uh, hooks in my uh, flyer. Okay I'm going to show you how to install these little rings on your flyer. You will see that one end of the ring has a, a closed part and the other end is open. You want this closed part to go in to the end of the hook. The easiest way to put them in is to hold them between thumb and forefinger like this to the side of the hook and then just rotate them in. So uh, I've got the end butting on to the end of the um, plastic piece and I'll just pinch and rotate and that's really all there is to it. I'll do the next one. So hold between thumb and forefinger, line up that so the end of the hook goes into the end of the ring and twist and it just pops into place. Now before we start spinning, let's go over the uh, the controls. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, plug it into the mains. I will also plug in my foot switch. Now we have a fair few options in terms of uh, turning this on and off. We have our speed dial, we have our on off switch and uh, we have our foot switch. Just get that so it's in shot. Now obviously you don't have to use that with your foot, you can use that with your hand. So I'm going to turn the speed dial down to zero first. If I turn the main power switch to on, nothing happens because I have no speed but I can slowly turn it up here. Now I can turn it off there or I can turn it on 
at the machine and turn it off at the switch. Turn it back on at the switch. Turn it off with the speed dial. Turn it back up here. Turn it off here. So I can use combinations of the on off switch, on off function of the pedal and the speed to uh, make it start and stop spinning. Over on the other side, I get it going. Now, you can probably see, I hope that is turning clockwise. If I turn the direction switch, it now starts going anti-clockwise. And let's turn that off with the pedal. So now you know how to start, stop, change speed and uh, change direction. So I'm going to put it back on Z because I'm going to be spinning my singles, which I normally spin Z and uh, put a leader on. A leader is just a strand of any old yarn that you use to connect the fibre you're spinning to your bobbin to get going. So I've made this loop here of uh, crochet cotton. It is uh, about, ah, however long that is, a couple of feet. And uh, this is how I put my leader on to uh, minimise any slipping. I will uh, pass the loop around the bobbin and the end through and snug that off. So I've got a half hitch around the bobbin. Now I'm going to add another half hitch by making a loop and passing the end through the other direction. Snug that off. Now I can spin or I can ply and I can pull this in both directions and it won't slip. So I'm feeding this through my guide hooks. This hook here always stays in the same place, pushed as far to close to this end, the orifice, as possible. This hook here, I will slide up and down as I spin to fill the bobbin evenly. Uh, I will now get my orifice hook and go through there, grab my leader and out to the side. So I will turn my speed right down to start off with and uh, get it started and just check that my tension's okay. I don't want it yanking out of my hands or not pulling on before I've even got my fibre connected. So let's have a go. All right, that's a little bit strong for me, so I'm going to turn that down. Try that again. Okay, that's better. So uh, I'm all ready to go. I have some fibre here. This is white face woodland. Uh, if you watch my uh, East Benefit Beginners series, I talk about uh, what different types of fibre you may wish to choose. So I'm attached to my leader and put the speed up. There we go, I'm ready to start spinning. And I can simply draft. And I've already checked my tension, so this is taking up nicely. And uh, to use the controls while I'm spinning, if I, uh, if I find it a little bit hard to lean forwards at a critical moment, I can just quickly stop here, or I could put the foot switch on the floor and keep both my hands busy. You'll notice as it starts and stops, it takes a couple of seconds to uh, get up to speed, which is great because that gives me time to uh, move my hand back into place. It's not an immediate quick start. And uh, I'm not going very fast at the moment. Let's speed up some. Here we go. So this is top speed. I can, uh, I can probably hear it ramped up to that speed quite gently. So I'm uh, sliding off the table. And this is probably because I don't have my um, East Spinner set up right. It doesn't help that I've got a, a slidey tablecloth on. But if you look here, this hook is really far to the end. This hook is right in the middle. And that means I've got unbalanced flyer. So when I start spinning at speed, the East Spinner will start walking. So if I move that one forwards, line it up with that, and try again, then uh, you should see the East Spinner stays in one place and doesn't start sliding, even with my um, terrible uh, tablecloth. So turn you on here. So it's gradually ramping up. And there we go, I can uh, see the breeze of the flyer making everything move, but it is uh, no longer walking across the table. And uh, as well as doing very quickly, if you want to spin fine yarns, I can also turn it right down. 
and go incredibly slowly if I want to spin a really thick yarn which I wouldn't want to do with my orifice reducer on but uh, if I were a beginner or uh, wanted to spin very thick or very slowly for some other reason I can let's uh, go a little bit faster than that and uh, I can do a, a moderate uh, slub yarn here as I'm spinning thicker I should up the tension but this is actually taking on quite well I will turn it off there. So I've been through all the features of the e-spinner. Um, if you need more detail on spinning itself, as I said, check out the e-spinner for beginners series. And if you have any questions or anything I've not covered, please do ask in the comments. Thank you.